So today let's take a look at an interesting LED flashlight. It's quite small. It runs on one AA battery, but it's quite powerful for its size. And it was donated to me, so thank you for your donation. And here you can see the battery. It actually wasn't included. It's my battery. Here is the space for the battery and it's actually zoomable. Let's try to zoom it with the battery in it, because without the battery it doesn't really produce much light, of course. It's very nicely zoomable and it has three modes. Full power, low power and this annoying flashing, as always. And it's Skywolf IB18. And here is the zoomable head of it and this holder or clip. Now let's try to compare the brightness with my 18650 lithium ion battery flashlight. And as you can see, the 18650 flashlight is a bit brighter but not too much. So this one actually is quite bright for its size and for a single AA battery flashlight. It really is quite powerful for such a tiny flashlight. And let's check the batteries. My 18650 battery is 4.06, which is about 80 or 90% charge. And this AA battery is 1.55, which is also almost a new alkaline battery. And now let's measure the current it draws. And of course I will use a piece of wire and my clamp meter on it because the current meter of a multimeter will have a too high voltage drop and it could skew the results of the measurement. For such a low voltage, the voltage drop of a current meter in a multimeter is very significant. So let's set my clamp meter to two amps DC. It has to be DC. Zero it out and let's try to measure it. 0 0.95 amps, almost one amp, that's quite a lot. And at the low power setting it is 0 0.26, which is about one quarter. Almost one amp at full power, so it really is quite powerful for such a tiny flashlight running on just one AA battery. But of course, the voltage has to drop a little bit on the battery. Now let's try to take a look in it. It's zoomable, but the zoomable head doesn't come off here. But I can probably unscrew this ring on it. It screws. And there is the lens on it and the LED. And here you can see the LED in it. Quite a nice LED. It's not a cheap 5mm LED like in some other single AA battery flashlights. I have seen some flashlights running on a single AA battery with just a 5mm LED, which is rated about 20 or 30 milliamps, but it was actually driven at about 100 or 120 milliamps. But this flashlight seems much better. It has a proper powerful LED. And there is a ring in it. So let's try to unscrew it using a completely wrong tool, of course. And it screws. A wrong tool always works. And does it come out? Yes. The entire head comes out. There is the positive contact and the LED module, which pops out. There is some kind of foam ring on it, which works as a mechanical polarity protection. So the negative contact of the battery can't make a contact with this positive contact. It only makes contact with the proper positive contact of the battery. Because it's in a recess here. A very nice LED. And because the voltage drop of the LED is about 3 volts and the battery is about 1.5 volts when it's fresh, there has to be some voltage inverter, some boost inverter to increase the voltage. Can I see the inverter? It seems like some circuit board in it. Does it pop out? There is some tiny hole. Can I pry it out using a needle from a sewing machine? Uh, it breaks, 
Bloody hell. It's not easy to remove the board from it. A knife also doesn't work. Let's try a hook like this. Let's put it in the hole here and try to pull. Let's try to pull even more. And that's it. It's out. And here is the board from the other side. And you can see an inductor here in a boost converter. Two chips, three pins each, and a capacitor. And that's it. There is really nothing else in it. So one of the chips is probably the mode controller, switching the high power, low power and flashing mode. And the other chip is probably a boost inverter, driving this inductor. And here is the pair of wires going to the LED, which is on some kind of heat sink, which is pressed into this module. So I probably can't remove it without destroying the LED, but there is no need to remove it. It's probably just the LED on it and nothing else. Now let's try to reverse engineer the schematic of this board. And here is the schematic of it, which is quite simple. Here is the battery, the switch, the inductor, the capacitor, the two three-pin chips and the LED. And this chip seems to be a boost converter. And this chip is the mode controller, controlling the three modes. And in this case the boost inverter comes first and then there is the mode controller. And this is probably because it's a very low voltage, just 1.5 volts. So the voltage has to be boosted before it goes into the mode controller. But in other flashlights which run on a lithium ion battery, it's the other way sometimes. In those flashlights it goes into the mode controller first and then into the current regulator if there is any. But in lithium ion battery flashlights it's not a boost converter actually, it's a bug converter or sometimes just a resistor. Because the voltage drop of the LED is lower than the voltage of a lithium ion battery. And I guess that the boost inverter chip contains something like this. There is the diode, the switching transistor and some control circuitry which measures the voltage at the output maybe and regulates the duty cycle here. And of course the control circuitry is also connected to the power. And the internals of the mode controller probably look like this. There is some switching transistor and some control circuitry and it uses the charge in this capacitor to remember the last state because it switches the mode when you turn it off and back on. But I'm not sure where the current limitation happens. The first theory is that this one generates a constant voltage at the output and the current is linearly regulated here and the second theory is that this boost regulator is current limited and this is just a switch with almost no internal resistance or current regulation. Or is the current limited just by the internal resistance of the battery? But nevertheless I'd like to get rid of the flashing mode. So I'll try to get rid of this chip, which is probably just the mode controller and I will just connect it from here to here. Let's try to desolder the chip completely and just make a connection here and see what happens. If the current remains the same it means that the current regulation is in this chip and if the current will be much higher then it means that the current regulation is or was in this chip. Ok so now the chip is replaced with just a blob of solder and let's test it. So now it's reassembled and it works. Now let's measure the current. And the current is 0.95 amps. So it's the same as before. So it seems that the current regulation happens in this chip and this one is just a switch which switches the modes. At high power it's constantly on. At low power it's switching at a high frequency to pulse with modulate the brightness and in the flashing mode it switches at a lower frequency. So it's a very nice flashlight and now it's successfully modified and it has a very nice zoom.
and for such a tiny size it's really powerful, so I like it and of course thank you for your donation. So it seems like that this chip also contains some current sensing resistor in it, probably here and the control circuitry senses the voltage drop on it or maybe it senses the voltage drop on the transistor, which may not be a bipolar transistor but a MOSFET. And this one as well. And here's the removed chip. But there is no external current sensing resistor, so there is no way of changing the operating current, unfortunately. But I believe that it runs at a reasonable current anyway, so I don't have to change it. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And here is my 100 watt mains voltage LED, which arrived completely banned from the shipping. It's completely twisted. This is not going to go on a heat sink.